broadcasting live from Houston, from the space city to the world, you are watching Now Media Television. Today in Pain Diaries, we're going to talk about joint injections. Also, we have a few very important guests today that will discuss with us everything about pain medicine, home health services, and medical technologies that are changing the way we deliver pain relieving treatments. Remember, you can find me, Dr. Suzanne Manzi, at performancepain.com or call 346 217 1111. Don't forget to watch Pain Diaries on the following channels. Houston, 21.10, Beaumont, 27.10, Atlanta, 22.10, Lake Charles, 21.10, College Station, 14.10, Eagle Pass, 24, Piedras Negras, 24, and hear us in Chicago at 102.9 FM and 104.3 FM in Huntsville, Texas. Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Music also host Pain Diaries and follow us on all social media and our digital platforms such as nowmedia.com. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi, and this is Pain Diaries. Welcome back to Pain Diaries. Today, I want to discuss the many different types of joint injections. Why do I want to discuss this topic? Well, there are so many different options for relieving joint pain. First of all, what is a joint injection? An injection into the joint is a treatment option for pain in the joint that results from an injury or from a degenerative joint condition. So let's take a step back for a second. What is a joint? It's the point in the body where one part of the skeleton is connected to the other part. Think of it like a human hinge. Our joints allow our muscles to move our skeleton. There are different categories of joints, but I'm going to focus on the joints that can possibly cause us pain on a day-to-day -day basis. Have you ever had knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, or even back pain? If you have, you know what joint pain feels like. It's not a good feeling. So how do you know if you're a candidate for joint injections? Usually, if you have pain in the joint and it's disabling, and you have failed other more conservative measures, such as physical therapy or medications, you may be a candidate. We like to utilize joint injections to put the medications directly where they need to go, so you receive the full benefit, unlike oral medications that have to go all the way through your digestive system and may not fully absorb into your bloodstream and get into the joint space where the medication needs to be delivered. You may also be a candidate if you have joint damage from an injury that causes pain and decreases range of motion. At the end of the bones that form the joints, there's cartilage or cushiony surface present. This can tear and cause significant pain. There are also ligaments and tendons that hold the joint in place, which can also be sprained, strained, or even torn. This may cause pain, which can also warrant joint injections. Joint injections may be a part of your pain management plan for bursitis, tendonitis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, whiplash, and other conditions that can cause pain and joint dysfunction. Making an accurate diagnosis allows us doctors at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine to suggest the best injection with the hopes of needing the fewest possible number of injections to complete care and reduce your joint pain. So let's start with our discussion about steroid injections. Steroid medications can vary based on the condition and what we choose to use. We utilize medications with big names such as dexamethasone, triamcinolone, or methylprednisolone to inject into the joint. You may have referred to these as cortisone injections. These medications are anti-inflammatory. They work quickly to reduce inflammation that contributes to pain. With a steroid injection, local anesthetic may be added to that injectate. This agent numbs the nerve endings in the joint, which also help increase the comfort and flexibility of your joint. Another option, especially for knee osteoarthritis, is gel. 
also known as hyaluronic acid. It mimics the natural substance found in the joint fluid. It acts as a lubricant and cushion between the bones. Hyaluronic acid injections can be given as a single injection or spaced out once a week, up to a series of five injections if needed. It depends on which one your doctor chooses for your condition. The options are endless. Lastly, regenerative medicine can be utilized to help the damage inside the joint space. We at Performance like to utilize platelet-rich plasma, PRP, or bone marrow aspirate concentrate, also known as BMAC. PRP comes directly from the blood, and BMAC contains stem cells directly from the bone marrow, which we get from inside the hip. These are two options that heal. As you know, I especially like to heal my patients. I'll discuss these regenerative options in a much more detailed episode on pain diaries. So what can you expect during a joint injection? After signing a consent form, you usually are positioned on a table so the doctors can visualize your joint with either ultrasound or fluoroscopy, which is a fancy word for x-ray guidance. After disinfecting the skin, using our needle guidance, we numb the area of interest overlying the joint and we guide the needle directly into the joint. Once we verify the needle is in the correct location, we then inject our medication of choice. Following your injection, you can resume your usual activities. Your doctor may recommend avoiding strenuous exercises and high impact activities depending on which injection with which you were treated. Some people can experience immediate relief of their joint pain, especially if local anesthetic is utilized with steroid and hyaluronic acid. But if utilizing PRP or stem cells in the joint, full benefit may take up to 12 weeks to achieve. And these, as these injections take time, work their magic. If therapy and medications are not enough to relieve joint pain, find out if you are a candidate for joint injections. If you're in the local Houston area, call Performance Pain and Sports Medicine today, 346-217-1111, or submit an inquiry at www.performancepain.com. This is Pain Diaries, and we'll be back after a short break. <music> Welcome back. I'm proud to introduce Mr. Muhammad Hussein, Director of Development of All About Home Care Incorporated. This company provides skilled home health services to geriatric patients in the greater Houston area. They've been serving the Houston community for nearly 20 years. Muhammad is the Director of Development at All About Home Care and has served in this role for the last seven years. We're excited to learn more about the services you all provide and will help us differentiate why we would need to utilize home health. So let's start with, tell us what is All About Home Care? Yeah, so um, All About Home Care is a uh, Houston-based company. We've been servicing the Houston community for nearly 20 years. Actually, next March will be our 20th uh, year anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so we're very excited. Um, during, this, uh, during the course of, uh, of our company's existence, we've serviced uh, I think over 6,000 patients, so we're very proud of the work we do and uh, the population that we serve. That's awesome. Congratulations. You. Um, can you tell us a little bit about home health? Because I know some people can be confused about, oh, are you going to send somebody that's going to help with care at home for my older parent or aunt or uncle, yeah. or does the patient have to be sick, or just kind of, sure. if you can differentiate, that'd be great. Yeah, so, um, you know, the healthcare continuum is a very large um, you know, space, and there are a lot of different types of specialties and, and specialists. Um, home health, in particular, is one uh, is one space that is growing, um, and we're seeing more and more patients get home health uh, services. And home health services really has a, a wide range of different types of niches. Uh, you have all the way from the non-skilled, I think, which is uh, what you may have been referring to, a more like companion care mm -hmm. uh, assistance with uh, you know grooming and. Uh, some activities of daily living, um, all the way to you know very highly skilled wound cares and infusion therapies uh, and things of that nature. So there's a there's a lot of different specialties within home health, 
uh, from the non-skilled side all the way, uh, you know, to the through the skilled side. Okay. Are you at um, all about home care specialized to do anything besides just home health? So. Maybe elaborate yeah. more on exactly sure. what you guys do. <laughs> so what we do is specifically the skilled side of home health. So uh, we send, um, uh, there are six main disciplines that we uh, are able to provide in the home health, uh, in the home setting. And that includes skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, medical social work, and home health aids on a limited basis. So the services that we provide specifically are uh, more post-acute skilled home health services. Okay. Um, are there certain criteria that the service that the service is needed to fulfill? You know, for that patient yeah. to get that service, do they have to fulfill certain criteria? Can yeah. anybody actually get it? So our organization, uh, we're more geriatric oriented, okay. and so we service uh, primarily the, the Medicare population. And uh, Medicare covers this service as a benefit, uh, but it does uh, require that the patient be homebound. So there is a technical definition uh, as to what constitutes homebound, okay. uh, but it is essentially um, that the patient, you know, is confined to the home, or that leaving the home is medically contraindicated, and uh, requires a taxing effort or the assistance of a person or um, an assistive device. So uh, that the patient be homebound, and that there be a medical necessity for the service that has been ordered, whether that be nursing or physical therapy or any of the other services. What if it was just a young patient and they just couldn't drive because of their injury? Would that be an indication to you? So uh, patients uh, who fall into that category can receive services. Okay. Um, it just, uh, you know, it would, most plans follow the Medicare criteria. So uh, they would have to check with their insurance to see if that's something that they would cover. Okay. That would be a potential patient as well. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, that, uh, that type of patient is absolutely potentially a, a a home health patient. Okay. And your role in the organization, can you elaborate yeah. more on that in case we need to contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my role is uh, as a director of development and I, I have kind of a, a dual mandate. Um, so most directors of development are out kind of growing the business, mm -hmm. which has been, um, you know, certainly one of my uh, main roles. And that is through, uh, you know, educating the community uh, about the services that we, that we offer. Um, you know, letting primary care uh, facility, uh, primary care practices, and other specialists know that we're a community resource, uh, as well as hospital systems, um, you know, and skilled nursing facilities. And then the uh, my other my second mandate is really growing the infrastructure of the organization. So, um, you know, part of my my mandate is uh, you know facing the community and growing the organization, then also growing our infrastructure so that we're able to handle um, you know those additional patients. That's fantastic. So usually when you get a patient on your service, what's the length or duration that they're on your service for yeah. services? Uh, great question. Uh, so our services are intermittent. Um, and what that means is that we provide services for a short duration of time. Okay. where they are typically 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, depending on the complexity of the visit. And our patients are typically on service for 45 to 60 days uh, but that can also increase, um, you know, depending on the case. Uh, uh, but some, you know, we deliver uh, care in 60-day episodes typically. Um, so usually within those 60 days, patients are stabilized and we're able to discharge. Uh, occasionally, we will recertify for another 60-day period. Oh, wow, 60 days. Yeah. That's a decent <laughs> amount of time. Hopefully, people get better in that. Yes. Sounds like a long time frame. It, so it depends on the case and, uh, you know, more and more insurance companies are uh, giving kind of more per visit authorization, so they'll authorize mm -hmm. a certain set of visits rather than a 60-day period. Um, but um, you know, we're proud of the outcomes that we're able to achieve in that period and and uh, and get people better. Great. Yeah, I've <laughs> referred people to home health um, in my practice before, and you know, it seems it's a great service for those people that just they're stuck at home and they can't get to outpatient therapy. Yeah. Um, but that's fantastic that you have to offer yeah. those services. Um, what if the patient happens to get readmitted within those 60 days to a hospital? If they became more acute again, what happens yeah. then? So, um, you know, one of our main objectives is to prevent hospitalizations. So that's one thing that we're constantly working. Uh, we're working to design a plan of care that keeps the patient out of the hospital. So that, that's one of our main objectives. 
Uh, should a patient be rehospitalized, um, we would perform uh, like a transfer coordination with the hospital. Okay. Um, and then once the patient is discharged with additional home health orders, we would resume uh, you know their care in the home setting with a new plan of care typically. Okay. Yeah, the fact that that's one of your goals is to keep them out of the hospital. I'm sure yeah. everybody <laughs> likes that. Not just Medicare, but the patient. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, their yeah. families for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, really, the role that home health plays. Uh, you know, home health is a type of uh, space that brings a lot of value. Uh, you know, for the whole healthcare system, in my opinion. So um, I'm really, you know, proud of the work we do, and I think it's very valuable work. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, if if you or Anybody you know that's interested in any of these services, please reach out to All About Home Care at www.aahcare.com or call the office at 713-802-1211 or come see us at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine and we'd be happy to refer you to All About Home Care if you are a candidate. We're happy to work together to help you get better because as you know from Pain Diaries, you have to take care of you and your family members so you can take care of business. It's time to go to a commercial break. Mohammed, thank you so much for Absolutely. participating. It's and a it's great to see you here on the show. Coming up next, we have more special guests to enlighten you, enlighten you into the world of medicine. Remember, I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi with Performance Pain and Sports Medicine, and you're watching Pain Diaries. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm so happy to introduce my special guest, Armando Valenzuela. Armando is a results-driven medical sales professional with over 25 years of experience. He's worked with various national manufacturers and distributors to provide him with a vast and diverse knowledge of key industry products and players. He is an exceptional communicator with the ability to present solutions to his clients. Armando is constantly looking to learn about new products and industry trends to help his clients stay ahead. So let's get this straight, Armando. Your clients are usually doctors and business owners that take care of patients, right? Absolutely. I'm happy to be one of them. And your goal is to ensure patients get what they need from their medical professionals, right? From A to Z. Love it. <laughs> one of the divisions uh, of your company includes an MRI center that stands out from surrounding competitors weight-bearing versus lie-flat MRI when imaging the spine makes a difference. So I'm excited to hear about why this is different and what patients can expect with going into a weight-bearing MRI. But let's back up a little bit. Let's start with some basic questions. First, I want you to tell me a little bit about your business before we get into the MRI side. So what our business provides, um, earlier I said from A to Z, uh, patient gets injured, patient has pain, they go to see their physician, uh, we can provide solutions for, for any type of foot pain, leg pain, back pain, uh, shoulder pain. We have doctors that we work with that provide solutions to, from providing implants to providing diagnostic testing that can help the physicians that we work with diagnose uh, what these problems are and how to fix them, so to speak. Okay, very cool. I know I've worked with you with different implants that help people with their spine pain. Um, I've also worked with you with um, kind of like a referral type network where doctors and other doctors refer, we refer to each other, which is great to get patients to what the ultimate point of what they need from whichever doctor you know treats their known condition so that's been a it's been a pleasure to work with you for the past couple years thank you yeah some some physicians uh, don't always treat every type of injury or problem that a patient may have so mm -hmm. having a network of physicians like yourself and others that I work with uh, is is helpful for me to be able to provide doctor solutions and, and, op and other options. I completely agree, I love that. So let's go back. Um, 
this new company that you've been working with under your company called um, STAT, it's an MRI facility. So let's talk about what an MRI is to start, and then we'll get into that company a little bit more. Absolutely, the name of the company is STAT Diagnostics. So what STAT offers um, is, is unique because, so say you have back pain, uh, cervical pain, any type of uh, spine-related injury. Mm -hmm. um, every other diagnostic company out there that does MRIs uh, usually only does a testing in while the patient is laying flat on their back. So what these images do, what an MRI is, um, it gives your physician a image of what could be wrong. Could you have a musculoskeletal injury? Could you have a soft tissue injury? Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, a diagnostic imaging test that lets them know or gives them a better idea where the pain could be coming from and what to do next after said test. So. I use MRIs all the time in my practice at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine. So an MRI meaning magnetic resonance imaging. Um, you know, there's no radiation, which we like. I'm really not a fan of radiating my patient for an imaging test. So that's the great part about MRIs. It's magnetic. So no radiation is awesome. Um, and yet, yeah, really, I like to make sure I have a map before I go in and inject a patient. I tell the patient, you know, sometimes they don't want to go get an MRI. Why can't you just do the injection? Because I, I pretty much know where it's coming from a lot of the times from my diagnostic skills as a physician with a physical exam. But I need a map. And I also don't want to inject anything or do the wrong thing for the patient in case there's something that's not supposed to be there, such as a tumor or something like that. And an MRI picks up those things to make sure, you know, we're just looking at the spine, per se, or the joints again, to make sure that the patient gets the correct treatment. And that's where I use the MRI. Yeah, absolutely, and I couldn't, said it, but couldn't have said it better myself. Um, like I said earlier, typically if somebody has back issues, cervical neck pain issues, you go to your physician and you have the conversation of, I'm having these, this pain when I sit down, when I stand up, when I'm running, when I'm walking. But when we send them to an imaging center, What's the first thing that we do? We lay them down, mm -hmm. right? And in our opinion, that's not gonna give you the best possible image or depiction of what could be going on. Right. So what, at our centers, we have a weight-bearing MRI facility where the patient does lay down initially. We take some images in the supine position and then the machine itself rotates to be weight bearing. Oh, that's cool. So it loads the spine um, like it normally would be when we're standing, sitting, and then we take images in that position. And then we're able to show the physician the difference between the images while the spine is weight bearing okay. and when it is not. I can't wait to send some patients there to see what the difference is because I've only had either patients sitting or Again, 99% of the time they're laying flat. We, we feel that, and we have proof with, with physicians that are sending to us now, and they see both images, they're able to get, like you said earlier, a better picture of what's going on so that you can have a better treatment plan for them. Wow. So I know I've been in an MRI before, and I don't mind it, but some people are very claustrophobic. Is this the same type of tube with that claustrophobic feeling where you're very in, enclosed in the tube or is it a little more open? I can relate. <laughs> I've had an MRI of my shoulder years ago and I was in a tube and it was very, very um, claustrophobic feeling. It was uh, not fun. Uh, and then when you have to stay still for 45 to 50 minutes, it can be kind of overbearing. Um, our unit is an open design. Ooh. You can have headphones and listen to music while you're experiencing uh, the, Im the imaging test. And uh, it only takes about 35 to 40 minutes. That's pretty fast. Does it also make those loud noises that all the other MRI machines make? 
It is. It does, <laughs> but you don't hear it because you have your headphones listening to music. Even if they image your neck, you can wear headphones? Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Okay. Um, so what else would you say um, you know, is, is unique about, about this? Um, I mean, other than what we've spoken about before, about being able to give your physician a more accurate depiction and of what the problem is, what is causing the pain, um, having the open design, um, having multiple facilities in Houston, um, that's, that, that's about it. I can't think of anything else that... Okay, and that you have would, multiple. Yes, okay. we do. We have facilities in the Houston area and we have facilities in, in, in the Woodlands. Okay, perfect. So that's great that there's options instead of just one location. I know you told me previously there's a, a location on uh, Katy Freeway. Um, not quite yet. Not quite not yet. Quite yet. Th okay. That is in the works. Perfect. Um, but uh, as of now, we have a few, a couple of facilities, one in I-10 and on off of I-10 and Shepherd, and okay. one in, in the Woodlands. Awesome. So that serves both bigger metropolitan areas of the greater Houston city. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to have you here today. I'm excited to hear more about the different technologies that you work with in future episodes. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, so if you're interested in any of these services with um, weight-bearing MRIs, you can contact Stat Diagnostics at 832-831-0268, and they're in Houston and the Woodlands, as Armando said. So Armando, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you and look forward to seeing you in future episodes. Thank you for having me. Hey, Dr. Suzanne Manzi again, and we're back with more Pain Diaries. Today we have our recurring segment, Talking Insurance with April Clark. April, welcome back to the show. Hi everyone, I'm April Clark. Um, thanks for having me on the show, very excited. I am a health insurance agent. I'm licensed in 35 states across the country. So the majority of the United States. And basically what I specialize in is, is, is helping people who aren't offered health insurance through their job um, helping them find adequate insurance, health insurance. And um, that's not the easiest feat all the time. So if you're like a small business owner, you're self-employed, or you work for a small business that doesn't offer benefits, um, I'm the person that can kind of help you navigate where you need to go. So um, today we're going to answer a few common questions we receive and, and go from there. So one of the questions I have is basically from a small business owner. Um, he's just working for himself. He's I, what you could call, I guess, self-employed. And uh, he wants to know what health insurance options he has. So many of you know there's the uh, Obamacare marketplace plans. Um, those are available um, during open enrollment or during a life-changing event. Open enrollment statistically, well, I mean, the president can change it each year, but it's traditionally um, November 1st through December 15th each year. This year it has been extended until January 15th. Okay. And it starts tomorrow or it starts November 1st. And, um, that's always an option. That is typically the most expensive option unless you're low income. Okay. So everybody's situation is a little bit different. That's why it's good to talk to someone like me who can help you navigate. But what I do is I can often help people get a PPO. So I can usually help them get plans where they can see any doctor, any hospital. They don't need referrals. And um, they basically are going to have benefits a lot more similar to what they had when they did work for a large company. Okay. And um, so whether it's one person, just you running the business, or maybe you have it's you and your wife and just the two of you are kind of running the company, I'm typically able to help you get into a PPO um, plan, again, where you can choose your doctors, choose your hospitals, you have coverage when you travel, you can even have coverage while working on the job. 
So it can help prevent workman's comp claims, which is a huge benefit for, for small business owners. And uh, another question I get is, you know, I'm self-employed. Is it best to go through a broker or just go through the marketplace, Obamacare Exchange? I'd recommend talking to someone like myself who, again, can answer or ask a lot of questions to understand your needs better. Because if you're low income and, and you could potentially get, you know, a much better deal on the marketplace because the government is subsidizing your insurance, you know, that might be very different than someone who's running a successful business. They're not low income and, and they, they want to have usually better benefits. <laughs> and, um, but again, the government doesn't subsidize, pri subsidize private insurance. So it really just depends on what's going to work best for you. Okay. So again, um, if you have questions, you're self-employed, you're a small business owner, uh, entrepreneur, or maybe you just don't get insurance offered through your job, you work for a small company, I'm here to answer those questions for you. Again, um, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm April Clark. If you need to reach me, my phone number is right on the screen. It's 281-475-5047. Um, you can call or text. I am on the phone a lot with clients. So if I don't answer, just send me a text. Otherwise, of course, you see on the bottom my website or you can um, Google me. Just look up April Clark Health Insurance and you'll find me. And then we can um, you can send me an email and we can talk that way. However it is you're comfortable getting started. I'm happy to answer your questions. And there's no charge to you know do a consultation just to see what's best. Have a great day. Thank you, April. Um, it's April Clark Health Insurance. We really appreciate your information. We're going to go to a commercial break right now. Thank you for watching Pain Diaries. See you back in a few. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzi. Welcome back to Pain Diaries. We're going to talk some more insurance today. This time, benefits specialist Dana Oliva with the Alliance Medical Group will be joining us. I'm so excited to introduce him right now. Hi, this is Pain Diaries, and I'm Dana, the benefit strategist with Alliance Insure Group. I help protect my clients from unexpected medical costs. Today, I'll be discussing how can you choose the best plan for you. Um, now, while cost is usually the top of mind for most individuals, there are things you want to consider uh, when trying to select your plan. Uh, number one, are, uh, the, are you going to be eligible for zero premium plans, okay? Uh, with those, what happens is you are uh, given a certain amount of uh, tax incentivization uh, towards getting the plan and it'll offset some of the costs. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, the other thing is uh, deductibles and coinsurance. What are you comfortable with? Uh, $9,000 are pretty typical for some of the new plans that are coming out in 2023. Um, and if you need to, we can bump you up to different uh, metal levels. And we'll explain that a little bit later as well. Um, is your doctor in network, okay? You want to make sure that your doctor that you're going to be going to see is going to be in network because you want to maximize the, uh, the, and leverage your plan uh, to make sure that they're in network. Uh, is your medication covered? Some of the medications out there are relatively expensive and having uh, it covered under the plan is a must. Uh, is telemedicine service available? Uh, if that's important to you, we want to make sure that it is, in fact, listed on the, uh, the, the uh, summary of benefits. Uh, and uh, when will you need the plan to start by? Some of the, uh, the plans are uh, date specific, so you need to make sure that if there is a time constraint, uh, that it's going to be met. Uh, working with a licensed, knowledgeable health advisor is usually advisable. They can help you uh, weigh the options. There is typically no additional charge for this service, and you don't need to go it alone, okay? Um, also, to note, short-term plans are just that. They were never really designed to provide long-term health care, and typically, 
Uh, they're good for a six month term um, and uses stop gaps in between coverage. Uh, again, this is Dana, uh, the benefit strategist over at Alliance Insure Group. Thank you, Dana, for joining me on Pain Diaries here on Houston 21.10 on Now Media. Please note the information in this show is for informational purposes only and not medical advice. It's not a substitute for professional medical advice, and I urge you to seek medical advice from your physician regarding any medical condition. Reliance on this information provided in this show is provided slowly at your own risk. I'm Dr. Suzanne Manzia at Performance Pain and Sports Medicine, and this is Pain Diaries on Now Media TV. Take care of you so you can take care of business. I look forward to seeing you again on our next episode. This has been a Now Media Television feature presentation. All rights reserved.